I have a rhetorical question. What do you think is the possibility that, while choosing and sorting images based on JPEG previews, you're going to discard the better quality image and keep the lesser quality one? Let's take a look at a typical training shot for a holiday. Noon on a sunny day, blue Ionian sea, bright white limestone pebbles, bushes with dark green high detail leaves, which lose all detail if the shot is underexposed, deep shadows under the bushes. These types of scenes typically have a very wide dynamic range. We will see later, however, that the real range of the shot we are examining is pretty much only 8 EV, if the exposure is technically correct. Shoot in RAW, bracket the exposure, and try to choose the best shot by picking the image the old way, which is based on the built-in JPEG, using the JPEG histogram, and the brightness of the screen. Let's look at two shots, one taken at 1 1600th of a second, and the other taken at plus 1.33 EV at 1 640th of a second. Looking at the JPEG histograms, out of the two shots, shot number 1861 is exactly what we need in terms of exposure. The histogram is just touching the right wall, while the second shot, number 1865, is heavily overexposed on the pebbles and on the clouds, lacking plenty of detail in those areas. The histogram for the embedded JPEG of shot number 1865 is climbing the right wall, confirming what seems to be overexposure. Now let's look at the raw for the same images, setting the white balance from a white pebble, and using propagation mode so that the next file will be opened with the same white balance that we have set for this one. Consider the raw histogram and overexposure statistics for the shot that seems to be correctly exposed when looking at the JPEG preview and now the one that looked overexposed in JPEG. Oops. Examining the raw histogram for each of the shots, we see that the first one, number 1861, the one that looked so properly exposed based on JPEG, is heavily underexposed in raw. The histogram is shifted to the left with a substantial gap between the edge of the histogram and the right wall. Meanwhile, the other shot, number 1865, is taken using what is often referred to as ETTR technique. The histogram is all the way to the right, and the shot is exposed in such a way that it has no overexposed pixels. What we've done is pick an image using JPEG and not RAW, and by basing the decision on the JPEG histogram and on the on-screen brightness, but not the RAW histogram, we have chosen an image that is underexposed by 1.33 EV. Let's have a look at the next shot, number 1866, where one third of an EV is added to exposure compared to the already hot shot, number 1865. We can see that we have lost very little. Only 0.4% of pixels ended up overexposed, and only in the green channel. To see what the overexposed areas on the shot are, we press O on the keyboard, and magenta highlighting appears on the blown out areas on the pebbles. This small defect is easily fixed in raw conversion. Opening this file in Adobe Lightroom, the white balance is picked from the XMP file recorded by FastDraw Viewer, so we don't need to set it again. And pressing the Auto button for the tone settings, we will get the following very usable image. Meanwhile, if we had looked at the embedded JPEG for the shot number 1866 and the JPEG histogram, we would have surely discarded the shot because it looks grossly overexposed, as also indicated by the JPEG histogram climbing the right wall. Note that based on the raw histogram for shot number 1861, it appears that we need about 10 EV of dynamic range for the camera to render the details in the shadows. This is quite optimistic for the given camera, not to mention that for quality and detailed shadow reproduction, no more than 8 EV is allowed on the final image. It turns out that with technically correct exposure, we can place most of the scene in the required 8 EV range during the shoot without additional work in a converter or graphic editor. Let's now explore the underexposure, evaluating the image areas below the 8 EV limit. To display underexposure highlighting, we press U. We can see that on shot number 1861, around 10% of the area is underexposed, both in the red and blue channels. See the magenta and white highlighting. While on shot number 1865, the underexposure zone makes up about 1% of the total image area, which is completely normal. For shot number 1866, the overexposure zone is a rather negligible 0.5% of pixels. Now, let's visually analyze the deep shadows for each of the three images. We can see that for shot number 1861, 
The details in the shadows are plugged to pitch black. While for shot number 1865, and especially shot number 1866, they are quite usable. Basing our image selection on JPEGs, we would have ended up with trashing the correctly exposed shots and picking a shot that is underexposed by somewhere around 1.5 stops. As you can see, JPEG histograms can be very deceptive and are no indication of raw data. So, when culling shots by judging the technical quality based on the embedded JPEGs or uncontrolled raw conversions instead of raw, you risk making a mistake. Especially with difficult seams that have deep shadows, throwing away perfectly good exposure in favor of the subpar. Because in some sense, you are choosing the shots while wearing at best color changing glasses, and at worst, a complete blackout blindfold.